slides. Good morning, my dear friends and friends of Ayurveda. Uh, greetings from ABP Research Foundation. In continuation to our series of webinars on different topics of clinical interest, today I'm going to share with you my experiences as well as my team's experiences at ABP Research Foundation in treating and managing uh, one of the complications of diabetes that is diabetic foot ulcers. We all know that uh, last month we have taken over China as the largest population of the world. But with this comes a bigger responsibility because we also are going to be the diabetic capital of the world. And uh, with diabetes as one of the most important non-communicable disease, uh, and I would rightly so that is like a pandemic, we need to take a lot of effort in form of integrative healthcare, and Ayurveda has a major role to play in managing such complications of uh, managing of complications like diabetic foot ulcer in this space. So let us come to our topic today as to how this diabetic foot ulcers happen at first place. We all know that diabetes is a inflammatory disease. It's not just insufficiency of insulin. We know that insufficiency of insulin is majorly caused for type 1 diabetes, but more than 80% of type 2 diabetes do not have insulin insufficiency. Rather, they have a very, very low-grade chronic inflammation in their arteries, in their nerves, which tend to create changes in your system leading to neuropathy, then neuroischemia leading to less of blood supply into your food and the distal part of your body creating neuropathic changes. And because both neuropathy and absence of Adequate birth supply in the peripheral part, especially in the food, becomes more evident. Then there are unnoticed or unattended minor cuts, hits, wounds, which tend to develop into infectious condition and slowly gangrenous and then creates a series of changes anatomically leading to diabetic foot ulcers. Now, what is very important that, of course, it begins with a systemic uh, disease like uh, complications of diabetes leading to neuropathy and ischemia or loss of blood supply in a particular part. But this part is prone to compromise immunity and then a lot of bacteria, like especially uh, anaerobic bacteria, gram negative aerobic bacilli, gram positive aerobic cosi, all these kind of bacteria basically throng this place and does not allow wound to heal. And especially in India, we have seen that Staphylococcus aureus is one of the most predominant strain of or species of bacteria which are responsible for non-healing ulcers. And the worst part is with frequent use of antibiotics, 
these strain also become antibiotic resistant. That means they do no more respond to existing antibiotics and they need higher levels of intervention in terms of higher uh, generation of antibiotics to be given. And in turn, again, it impacts your gut microflora and then again, your compromised immunity. So this vicious circle of inflammation continues. It is indeed true that the reoccurrence of diabetes food is quite alarming. In fact, if you look at the reoccurrence rate, most of the reoccurrence happens within first three years of your first occurrence of the food. That means if you have a food ulcer this year, it's highly likely that within three years, again, you will have reoccurrence of the food ulcers. That means whatever is the modality right now in treatment of diabetic food ulcers needs further more integration of evidence-based practices. And this is where Ayurveda can help to understand this issue and address it from the base. First, let us understand that why diabetic wounds are different from a normal wound. It is well established fact that the diabetic food ulcers are host to certain inflammatory factors or biomarkers which are not there in a non-diabetic wound. So a general line of therapy or general creams which are good for normal wound healing do not work well with this chronic non-healing ulcers in case of diabetes because of certain molecular changes which happen specifically in the impaired healing process in diabetic wound. And that's why there is increased macrophagic activity. There is less of fibroblast activity which tends to heal the wound faster. And there are a lot of MMPs or matrix metalloproteins, which uh, does not allow the wound to heal faster. So any therapy which is targeted to an moderate the macrophagic response in first phase, enhance the activity of fibroblasts, and moderate the response of MMPs and reduce the NOS uh, activation. So this is very important for any diabetic food ulcer cases. You'll be surprised to know that almost 20% of people who suffer from diabetes all over the world has in their lifetime diabetic foot ulcers. And approximately 58% of them are infected also. And out of 100 diabetic foot ulcer cases, almost 27% people, 15 to 20% people undergo amputation. So if you look at the whole cost to the individual's income, as well as the health burden on health system in India, diabetic food ulcer does play a major role. And that's why I want to today discuss with you what Ayurveda has to offer in, in this realm of integrative healthcare reality is we know that with India taking at the helm of G20 and the world embracing the concept of integrative medicine, India has a big role to play from Ayurvedic perspective or Ayurveda, Ayurveda 
as such participation in global healthcare system. So you'll be surprised that way back, some 3000 years back, Sushruta had talked about management of wound. And especially there were Shashti Upakrama, the six different times of intervention, told to handle different kinds of wound. And almost 164 medicinal plants are um, mentioned in our classical Ayurveda text to having wound healing capacity, 24 metals and minerals and 18 in animal products. And there is a very strong conceptual understanding of the complication of diabetic ulcers or carbuncles in Ayurvedic texts where there is a specific chapter mentioned in Sushruta as well as Madhavindinara in other texts, Ashtangrida as Prameha Pitaka, where they have specifically talked about management of such diabetic carbuncles and diabetic wounds. I am going to share a few case studies which we have treated at our clinic. This is a case of interesting case of a 66 year old non-obese, well-controlled diabetic, but having multiple non-healing wound ulcers. That means in this case, the patient had very good glycemic control. The HbA1c was normal, but still the patient had reoccurrence of, as I told you, that possibility of reoccurrence of wound is within three years is also very high. So this patient had a amputation or debridement of one of the toes a year back. Again, the same patient develops after one and a half year, a non-healing ulcer in other point with gangrenous change, necrotic tissues, and also associated with septicemic nature, uh, such as uh, symptoms of low-grade fever, pain, extreme burning sensation, tingling. That shows that it was also associated with neuropathy. When you talk about management of diabetic root ulcer in Ayurveda, it's not a magic wand. You need to have patience. You need to uh, go through stage-wise therapy in Ayurveda. Like, for example, when you can see the first picture, this is a typical case where there is an acute inflammation. There is a lot of bacterial uh, growth. That's why you have bad smell, foul smell, symptoms of uh, uh, fever and all. So here, first, we will have to attempt to address to the acute inflammation, fever, and septicemia. Reduce that. And then once, what we say, dushtavarana in Ayurveda, so the first stage, here, when you have all these symptoms, it's called as dushtavarana. These wounds are infected and inflammatory. And then we have to reduce the infection and inflammation. So the first stage, we treat with drugs and herbs and external applications like uh, oil, applic uh, some cream, oil application externally, uh, then uh, certain kashayams internally, which reduces the pain, burning, suppuration, uh, fever, and then try to improve the circulation in that area. And then uh, we start the process of uh, initiating granulation in the, uh, the wound. So what happens is once the inflammation is down, you can see in the second photo, then second, the red granulation tissue starts. And in the third photo, you can say that granulation tissues are fully formed and the wound is ready for epithelization. That means the wound is ready for getting healed. Of course, you see that it took eight months to naturally, if you look at uh, the patient's uh, fingers, one finger is missing because, again, as I told you, this person had an amputation before. And because the previous amputation uh, was failure, we can't say it was properly healed. But then the issue is the process of inflammation which creates the diabetic wound still continues. So what is the gap right now in management of diabetic root ulcers that 
we are not having strong medication still to address the chronic inflammation which creates peripheral vascular damages due to diabetes. So Ayurveda can pitch in and integrate with existing uh, protocols and therapies which is there in treatment of diabetic boot ulcer. It can be integrated to get a better outcome for non-occurrence of these kind of uh, neuropathic wounds. So if you see the other side, the same patient, uh, within eight months of active therapy, we could again bring back a, a, a good granulation and epithelization. Yeah, just see, it's a nature's master plastic surgery. We have not done any flapping. We have not done any other intervention. Just allowed the system to heal on its own based on natural uh, healing process, which we trigger through Ayurveda medicines and local ac application internal medicine. So your body knows how to heal it on its own. Only what is required is you have to trigger that response. You have to enhance your immune response. You have to enhance the uh, blood supply into that area. We have to enhance the, uh, the sensitivity that reduce the neural inflammation and allow the, uh, the sensory and motor impulse to be more predominant. So this is a one very interesting case where we have treated uh, at our clinic in order to uh, show you that Ayurveda can integrate with other systems of medicine where we can. So in this course, I want to say that this patient, of, of course, didn't have any antibiotics because he was resistant to most of the antibiotics. So this was again a standalone therapy uh, only as and when certain symptomatic therapy was given uh, along with uh, the uh, our colleagues in allopathic physicians, but no major antibiotics were given to this case. And solely through our inpatient uh, therapy for uh, 21 days followed up by next six to eight months, we could achieve this success. So we see that how we can grade this wound. So in this condition, we can say that this is wound grade three. So this is an empirical evidence that according to CHS wound grade scale, we can manage diabetic wound cases where you have tendons, ligaments or joint also exposed, as you can see in this case. And it has a lot of necrotic tissues around. So we can see that it can heal. And if you look at this three, so what is the percentage of people who, uh, who, who can heal? In this case, only 40% chance was there that according to this study, if you look at scientifically, uh, with a wound grade three, uh, it's only 40% chance that the patient will heal. But we have seen that we have been able to treat him into this and bring him into this 40% group. This is another uh, non-neuropathic diabetic wood case again. And uh, since it's not as intense, it is just, uh, of course, again, it is uh, biomic. You can see pus discharge is there. There is a, a kind of uh, uh, septemic uh, condition, but very localized into one of the toes. Uh, of course, again, this again this case was put for amputation uh, or, or debridement of the first toe, but uh, the patient denied for such and was solely uh, managed by me in our clinic in terms of uh, doing, again, a conservative management. We, again, followed the same protocol as last uh, case you saw, but much uh, less inflamed and infected. So this response was much faster. We could see that a complete recovery, we can find out around three months uh, time. Um, and what we see is uh, that uh, the healing is uh, complete and, and, and it's as if there was no wound before, except if you see the nails which uh, has got started. So the similar thing, we 
work in this case of course uh, you can see this is the lateral aspect of the toe where again the lateral uh, part was also infected inflamed and there was uh, pymia and, and and there was all the symptoms of infection if you look at in this case yes here uh, because of the active wound we can see that uh, the patient's hba1c was raised so we gave uh, uh, in, intense therapy with uh, different kashayams and uh, different gulikas and uh, uh, powders along with external washing and application of uh, certain ointments uh, where what we see that as the wound started healing even hbnc which was 9.5 started coming back to 6.6 .6, so under a good control in this case what we can see that a non uh, 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 well controlled hyperglycemic uh, person uh, leading to secondary infections in the toe not majorly neuropathic still uh, because of hyperglycemia and local infection uh, leading to a septicemia leading to a chronic non uh, healing ulcer so what we get from this case what insights we get is that we can properly uh, address the cause real cause which is inflammation and in this again in this case there was no antibiotics used uh, there was because already last uh, three course he had taken antibiotics with uh, limited responses so we gave uh, so uh, what we see is in grade one two or three up to three uh, an Ayurvedic, intense Ayurvedic anti-inflammatory uh, internal medication can do good work in terms of also uh, addressing to the basic cause of uh, inflammation and reducing the even HBNC in, in due course of time, leading to wound healing faster. So, we all have been talking about reverse pharmacology these days that we all know that Ayurveda works. Uh, otherwise, uh, the cases which I have presented in front of you um, would not have uh, had these results. Not only this, I'll also show a uh, few more cases. But it's an important uh, responsibility of uh, a research organization like AVP Research Foundation to say that is there any science behind it so ayurveda itself is a science so there is no doubt that there's no science but then people talk about empirical evidence in terms of modern pharmacology and we call it as a reverse pharmacology where we take a case and then start studying uh, back to into our labs as to how it is working we saw it is working but how it is working so we found out very specifically the kind of intervention we gave in uh, these wound cases, they basically worked on principles of anti-inflammation, antimicrobial activity that it kills bacteria, uh, which creates, and especially Staphylococcus aureus, improves the blood supply angiogenic effect, and also it improves the uh, cell signaling factors responsible for enhancing wound. And at AVP Research Foundation, I, along with my team, with Latvian University and uh, AVP Research Foundation, we have already done some very important uh, research and has been published in uh, evidence-based complementary medicine uh, on efficacy of one of the, uh, uh, the formulation which was used for both this case, Jati Adi uh, formulation, which was used for both these cases for wound healing and for an external uh, application. So, what we found out that these formulations have high uh, percentage, higher percentage of uh, flavonoids, terpenoids, uh, certain kinds of uh, sterols, which are basically responsible for the uh, wound activity. What we found out of our surprise that we were 
trying to understand whether it is also, we all know that uh, a very uh, bitter substance with these kind of flavonoids, terpenoids, uh, sterols, they are good anti-inflammatory, but can they at the same time act as antibiotic or antibacterial? And to our surprise, we found out that whatever medications you give in uh, diabetic foot ulcer, uh, it not only acts as a anti-inflammatory wound healing, but also antibiotic, as antibiotic. It kills unfavorable uh, pathogenic bacteria. And we did uh, empirical uh, research on this and we found out that even against the multi-drug resistant staph orange, which is the most predominant bacteria present in these diabetic foot ulcers, these herbal formulations were active against them. So this is another area of uh, integration or adding the knowledge of Ayurveda into uh, management of diabetic foot ulcer that uh, if there are patients who have uh, bacteria which are not responding to regular antibiotic regime, the Ayurveda therapy can be uh, integrated uh, along with the existing therapy or to improve the outcome. And this is one of the cases which we have documented. You must see that this is almost 80 years a woman. Uh, she is suffering from this very small but very nagging uh, diabetic food uh, ulcer, especially under the heels. We know that because this area is more prone to uh, your body weight. The healing of the ulcer becomes a little hard. But the worst part was that they this wound was not healing also because there were drug resistant bacteria, especially staph orange. And taking the lead from our uh, research, we started uh, the application of the, uh, the required uh, extracts, which we found out uh, very effective in our research study. We made a paste out of it, uh, uh, and then we started dressing. And we found out that within uh, a span of three months, the wound completely healed, which was not healing for several years. And in spite of all sorts of antibiotic, which was given, uh, it didn't heal. Now, more, all of these cases which I am trying to tell you, we are following at, it up even after six years. Uh, first two cases have been followed all, almost six to eight years now. Uh, and this case has been followed up to uh, now, that means around one and a half year. There's no reoccurrence yet. So, when we talk about when there is a, uh, what is the rate of re uh, reoccurrence? It's very important that can, from these insights, we, we'll, we are also collecting a lot of data on terms of uh, many other cases. These are only the representative cases, but we are collecting also data on as to whether when you use Ayurvedic mortality in treatment of diabetic ulcers, whether we can reduce the um, rate of reoccurrence. That's another important insight which we are gave, getting. And from our existing evidence, we seem to be very uh, hopeful that we can reduce the rate of reoccurrence. This is another case which I wanted to discuss because many a times uh, it's a very uh, uh, kind of, you know, uh, area, unexplored area of where an osteomyelitis, though the diabetic wound doesn't look to be very uh, gangrenous, but what you see, this is a grade five of wound where if you look at the x-ray, there is a osteomyelitis setting up in the body. So the bones are also affected as well as the different layers of the skin. And this is another insightful case where people have to be given high degree of antibiotics and this patient was taking antibiotics and still it was not healing. What we did with, with the existing therapy, once he was discharged from the regular hospital, we added Ayurvedic therapy 
and uh, within a span if you look at the uh, within, a, within a span of uh, integrative approach of an year just you see uh, it was 20 september sorry uh, it, it 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 was september 2020 and when we did another march 21 uh, x ray not only his wound completely healed but we can also see that osteomyelitis was reversed and we stick to the same modality uh, with a little more deeper uh, insight to treating inflammation at the level of bones where the choice of medication in ayurveda changes we could see a reversal of this case so how does it work? And as I was telling you, these are all inflammatory markers and most of the important inflammatory markers in such wounds are IL-6, TNF-alpha, MCP complex, uh, that is uh, a kind of chemokines. We, in our previous paper stated, we showed very scientifically that how these formulations down-regulate the uh, the, the uh, the expression of these inflammatory uh, markers. Uh, so what I would like to state that these, uh, all the uh, evidences, uh, whether our clinical evidence, when we are treating patients in our clinic, as well as when we are taking these instances to our lab and revalidating the uh, efficacy, we find out a deeper science in Ayurvedic thought process. I know no science is absolute, but then there is a strong scope of uh, integration in field of uh, management of diabetic food ulcer. And, and, and as part of our uh, lecture series of webinar to uh, make you aware that what kind of cases can be treated at AVP Research Foundation with the a strong base of evidence. Diabetic food is one of them. And me and my team at AVP Research Foundation are spearheading the cause of uh, treating such uh, diabetic food ulcer cases, uh, which come to our clinic with a fair amount of success stories. And what we would like to state that, uh, please look at Ayurveda at large, wherever you may be. You have many Ayurvedic physicians who are doing good work in this field. Uh, Ayurveda can address these situations of uh, where you may have chronic uh, wound uh, situations which are complicated by infection and inflammation can be well managed with Ayurvedic therapies. So once again, I thank uh, our viewers. I thank our uh, patients who pose faith on us and also our colleagues who work at each institution of AVP group as well as AVP Research Foundation uh, to make uh, this uh, a success. Uh, thank you.